Good evening. I'm Jonathan Dewberry, the director of this production of the Harlem Opera Theater's Shuffle Along. Sissel and Blake's sensational 1921 musical that was a smash on Broadway and ran for a number of years as well as tours around the country. So I welcome you to the Harlem Opera Theater's celebration of the 100th anniversary of Shuffle Along, 1921, when this musical was first presented in New York City. I thank you for your patronage and for supporting us this evening and know that you will enjoy this performance, which has been put together by a strong, powerful collection of artists, musicians, and administrators, and technical staff to make this possible for your enjoyment. Let's talk about the origin of Shuffle Along. It came from a comic sketch by the duo Aubrey and Lyles. And they were two black vaudeville comedians um, who put together uh, Florney Miller and Aubrey Lyles a sketch that was called The Mayor of Dixie. And from this sketch, they collaborated with Noble Sissel and Ubi Blake, who wrote the music and the lyrics for what became Shuffle Along. The basic premise of this is set in Jimtown, which is a fictional black town where you have three men who are running for mayor. Sam Peck, Steve Jenkins, who are both partners and who own a grocery store, and Harry Walton, who is like the underdog in this community. In the midst of this story, there is a love story between Harry Walton and Jesse Williams, whose mother is the owner of the Jimtown Hotel which is the hotel in Jimtown. In this production, what you will see, uh, which is what audiences saw back then, was a different presentation of black characters on stage. Here you have store owners, hotel owners, um, a sort of middle class black community. Um, at points, you will see them in uh, tuxedos, um, spats, women in evening dresses and gowns. So this was not the proverbial sort of country story of the servant class, the farmers, the, the maids, the cooks, the butlers, but a different perception of black people who are a little more sophisticated and dressed up. I should also point out with um, the two, Miller and Lyles, um, when they first did this production, right, they played the two um, lead roles, the Steve Jenkins and Sam Peck characters, and they were done in blackface, which was traditionally what black comedians had to don during this period to appear on the stage. Uh, we chose not to do that for this production, to focus more on the music and the story and the opportunity of what you're seeing. But do keep that in mind that that was the context of this um, entertainment venue was in blackface. So what you will see here then is a production where you have a smart, uh, somewhat sophisticated community as well as some people who are not as educated but they're still part of the community, which represents all aspects, in this case, of the black community, not just the poor, but the working class, the middle class as well. 
So this production will, will illustrate that. And we're doing it with just nine actors, not a full-fledged chorus. So you will see actors who are doubling and in some places tripling roles in what they're bringing to life with these characters. Also, the musical styles of this period that we see. Um, jazz was king in the early 1920s. Um, and this musical depicts that, as well as blues and some classical traditions that you will also hear in the music, which is part of the, the background and the training for Noble and Sissel as well. So keeping these aspects in mind, we also want to talk about the context of this period. Um, it was not usual to see black performers in this sophisticated, dressed up look. Um, and as I said, it was further uptown at the 63rd Streeter, 63rd Street Theater, which is where Shuffle Along premiered, which was way uptown in what is now 63rd Street between what is now Lincoln Center and Central Park. So for the first time, you had white audiences who were coming further uptown to see this new show. So much so that they had to make 63rd Street a one-way street because there was so much traffic coming in and out. Um, plus it allowed the opportunity for black audiences to sit in the orchestra, which was also a big deal, that if theaters even allowed black people, they usually sat in the balcony. So with this production, which was black musical directors, black musicians, um, singers, dancers, um, a, a full black production of black artists and musicians coming together, this sort of represented a lot of changes um, that would influence the theater later on with black performers. And, and also in this period, I also want to point out the context that in 1921, in the midst of Shuffle Along, we were coming out of the end of World War I, which ended in 1918. Um, women had just got the right to vote in 1920. And there was a whole lot of social political um, movings and goings on around the country um, that the country was celebrating, uh, trying to sort of get away from the drugs of the war. Plus, the flu epidemic of 1918 still had lingering effects in 1921. So there was also that to deal with. There were a lot of new inventions uh, mainly the electric stoplight. Because keep in mind that prior to this period, you just had police officers who would have a stop sign or a contraption to sort of control the traffic, stop and go. There was no stop light as we know it. So this was a big innovation. And you will see one of the numbers in our production that takes place on a street where there's a police officer who has, who has a stop sign and a whistle. So these kind of innovations were a big deal in the 1920s. Politically, um, we were dealing with a lot of racism and pushback from the black men who had fought in World War I and now had come home to America and faced further racism, segregation, lynchings across the country in the North and South. The Ku Klux Klan, otherwise known as the KKK, was rampant throughout this period. In the midst of this, you had black performers who were still trying to represent the culture, the music on the stage, around the country. And this opportunity was very unique. It wasn't the first time that we had a black show that was in New York that was not in Harlem. Williams and Walker, uh, the great musical comedy team, back in the late, uh, around 1908, 1909, 1910, um, had a production, not exactly on Broadway, 
Um, but it was in New York City, right, which was called In Dahomey, which was very successful. And that focused more in musically with, at that time, um, with ragtime, that sort of Scott Joplin period. So the 1920s, that next decade, gave us jazz and syncopated jazz, rhythm that you could dance and sing to. So this musical captures that. So we ask that you sit back, enjoy these nine actors and musicians um, who have worked hard to present to you this production, to give us a taste, uh, a concert version of what this production might have sounded like and looked like a bit back then. So we thank you once again for your patronage. We know that you will enjoy what you will be seeing and hearing. Um, feel free to join us. Um, we are definitely still accepting donations for the um, uh, continuance of the Harlem Opera Theater. Um, we thank you. We know you enjoy it. So sit back, come along with us, and shuffle along.
that there is going to be a little wedding. Oh, oh no. Oh, it's all right. I've known it right along. But none of that wedding stuff for me, kid. Why not, Ruth? Because I'm just simply too full of jazz. Everybody thinks I'm crazy.
that's fine and dandy. My boy, it behooves you to win. For if you are beaten by either one of those ignoramuses, Steve Jenkins or Sam Peck, who would run our town like they run their grocery store, I shall never consent to you becoming my son-in-law. But Miss Williams, and I just... that is final. Harry, you can't lose. Why Jenkins or Peck beating you? Why that idea is just absurd. I know, Jesse. I, I know, but 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 just suppose for a second. <laughs> Jim Town. 
and my candidate, Steve Jenkins, will be the next mayor. Never. You have asked me two or three times to get my husband to withdraw. But I'll wager you've never asked Mr. Walton to do so. That old love sick bird. He is the least of my worries. I suppose so. I come up in them good old bad daddy days. Well, honestly, what's the best policy? In those dear old bad daddy days, Cain and Cotton never forgot in bad daddy days. And their quaint old bad daddy as you is, and much as far as that concerned. What you talking about I got no right to be mayor of Jim Town? Uh, it takes brains to be mayor. You ain't got brains enough to have a decent headache. You just run against me because you're jealous of me. That's Tell all me. you is. Uh, and me and you running a grocery store together too. Minute I think I got a chance of getting elected, you splits the ticket. That's what I get for taking you in the grocery store as my partner. I've never taken you in in the first now, place. Here, listen. Wait a minute. Let me get you straightened out about that there grocery store. I put just as much money in that store as you did. Maybe a little more. I don't know. You ain't put no more in it. I'm more out of good things. No, more. you ain't out. Yes, I'm more out. Don't tell me I'm more out. But when it comes to politics, that's where the friendship ceases right then and there. And here's another thing. I ain't about to let you run for mayor of Gentown and not be some common folk. So get it out your head while you was at it. Look here, when I first started running, I says to you, I says, Sam, if I get selected mayor gym time, I was going to make you vice mayor. The vice mayor? Sure, that's a good job for you. Why don't you offer me a job that amounts to something? Like the governor of the county or something like that. Can I do with a vice mayor's job? You ain't got no business being nothing. You ain't even vote for yourself yet. I can't vote for myself. Anybody who's running for the office can vote for themselves. No, they can't. Don't tell me they can't. For I done voted for myself four times this morning. Yeah, but I is in a very peculiar position. I is a Republican, and I'm running on an independent ticket. And I ain't about to go against the old party. Steve! Oh. I have been looking all over town for you to make a speech. Now you need every vote you can get, so make it a good one. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Introduce me. Introduce me. Fellow citizens, it gives me great pleasure in introducing to you <laughs> Mr. Steve Jenkins, the people's candidate for mayor. Hear ye him. And hear ye me. I is running 
just as well as he is. And I be the best man. That's right. That's right. Here we is. Take your choice. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, sis, people, sis, and folks. Oh, you ain't left nobody out. I give you credit for that. <clears throat> Don't pay any attention to him, Steve. Go right ahead. Mm. As I stand before you, gazing into each and every one of your eyes, the question that rises in my mind is, what y'all think of me? Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Nah, don't tell him. <clears throat> Can you imagine that guy disturbing this crowd? This is my candidate. This is your crowd, right. not his. Oh, this is anybody's crowd. Make a leader. Uh, I, 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 I may not be bedecked with jewels and diamonds rare. I may not wear watches and chains, but I have walls. Walls and chains. <laughs> and calm yourself, son. Calm yourself. <clears throat> Ladies, gentlemen, peoples, and folks, when I first entered this race for Mayor Jim Town, I had not the least idea that there was a dark Horse in the race. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Surprised I was. Very much he surprised I was when I found out that that dark horse was my own business partner. Mm. <laughs> now, say something. Well, I might be the dark horse, but you ain't gonna never be no black man. Uh, listen to me, folks. Listen to me. <laughs> we will pay no more attention to my opponents. We will like nose here and focus on matters heat much more importance. Get to the point, Steve. Mm -hmm. For instance, look at the condition of your city today. I say, look at the condition of gym towns today. We have no electric lights here. You said it, Steve. Tis the girls will show you that they ain't been electric lights in gym town, not since before. Oh, they ain't uh, never been none here. Uh, uh, and there wasn't any here before then, either. <laughs> what we need is electric lights. Lots of them, lots of them. Look, look, how, look how dark it is in here. Who? Hey! Mm -hmm. What y'all looking at me for? So dark in here that if you lit one match, you'd have to light another one just to see the first one that you lit. Mm -hmm. Makes me your man. How about it, boys? I see that everybody in gym times gets lit up. I do more than that. I see that you all get electrocuted. You're going to kill everybody with all that me. Come on, man. Come on. What's the matter now? Steve, let Sam go. You make the speech, Tom. I can't make a... Ooh, ain't you a fine candidate for mayor? I spend one half the morning trying to get the crowd together. The other half walking them up one side of the street and down the other to find you to make a speech. And when you get to the most important part, you do a bonehead oh. trick like that. Listen, Steve, you do know this is election day, and you are running for mayor. <clears throat> Close, I know that. Why are you always asking me that for? Look at here, Tom. Ain't say I'm running for mayor same as I is. Didn't he follow that man same as I did? What is you talking about? I know, but you can't compare yourself. How to come me. I can't? Well, Sam is spending twice as much money as you in this election. Uh, spending twice as much money? Yes. And he's away ahead of you. I wonder where he's getting that money from. Didn't you just say that you two were partners in the same grocery store? Yes, and that's just what I'm thinking. We're partners. And your profits are the same? Well, they ought to be. <laughs> but maybe they ain't. Yet you wonder why he's got twice as much money to spend than you. Look at here, Tom. You don't mean that Sam is stealing from me, do you? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. And he's been stealing from you ever since you two have been in business together. What am I going to do about it? I have taken matters into my own hands. Well, I'm glad of that. Because you can catch him. I can't. You were slicker than I is. <laughs> Quite right. I have sent to New York for Jack Penrose, that great color detective. 
You leave old Sam to me. I'll fix him. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> if you don't sit for a detective, you gonna fix me. That's what you gonna do. <laughs> Listen, Steve, you, you don't understand. Oh, I understand. You don't understand. I understand better than you do. You was the man who don't understand. I understand fluently myself. Isn't there stealing going on in your store? Yes. And he'll come down here and catch the wrong stealer. He ain't just gonna come down here and watch Sam. He gonna lock up the first man he can't steal it. Why, of course. Well, I can't take no tests like that, huh? You can't. No, no, no. <clears throat> Listen, Steve. Mm -hmm. I am hiring the detective to watch Sam. Not to watch you. Oh! <laughs> He gonna watch the man we want him to watch. Why, of course, ain't he our detective? But listen, it's going to take plenty of money to do this. Well, if he come down here and watch Sam and keeps his eyes off me, you can have all the money you want. Fine. <laughs> That's all I wanted to hear you say. <laughs> all I want you to do. Just make sure I get elected. And if you do, I's gonna dance at your wedding. Ooh, and there will be a wedding just as soon as you is elected. Look at here now, Tom. Who are you gonna marry? Why, Emmeline. Oh, uh, who's she? Everybody loves Emmeline. She's the cow that all the fellas hang around. I don't know who she is. Everybody knows Emmeline. She's the pal of every other gal in town. Watch out. And every pal and gal will still be singing the blues when they hear the latest news in a honeysuckle town. Well, what her mama look like? like? Sweet Emma. Is my daddy rich? Said she'd be mine. And in the wedding line, there'll be no hesitating. For the preacher will be waiting with a knot on time. Oh, you are whip, whip, whip. And then by my side. Oh, All the fellas will be jealous and feeling kind of rough when I come along with Emmeline. Strut my stuff, hot dog, my soul's gonna knock them cold. Why, I'll be worth my weight in gold in the honeysuckle time. When I come along with Emmeline, strutting my stuff, hot dog, my soul, born and not from Pope Why, I'll be worth my weight in gold in honeysuckle time. When Emmeline said she'd be mine. talking to these girls. I got to talk to the women folks in order to get their votes, ain't I? I'll solicit the women's votes. You get the men's. No. If I can't talk to the women folks, then, then I'm sorry I'm running for the offer. Well, I'm not. Because if you are elected, then I get to run the town. If I'm elected, you can run the town? Of course. Ain't you my husband? Yeah, I'm your husband. Well, Ain't I your boss? My boss? Ain't I? Ain't I? Yeah. Well, if you run the town and I run you, then don't that make me run everything? Then all the power I get 
Dit is de eerste die ophoudt. Imagine me, the leading light of the city, running things to suit myself. Why? The first law I'll pass will be to get rid of Jim Green's gambling park. For what? That man ain't done nothing to you. Oh, he's making too much money, and his wife? She's wearing such fine clothes. Why, she's snubbing everybody. But just you wait. My time is coming. I'll show her. I'll fix her. I'll show yeah, her. I ain't even elected yet. And Steve, he getting just as many votes as I am. And you know why? Because he's buying them. And you know where he's getting the money from? Right out of the cash register in your store. Out the cash register? Of course. You mean? He's stealing the money? He's been stealing from you ever since you went into business with him. Is that so? Oh, yes, but he's through stealing now. When did he die? Sam. Yeah? I forgot to tell you. Yeah, go ahead. I sent to New York for that great colored detective. No, no, honey, no. Yes, dear. No. His name is Jack Penrose, and he's wonderful. He's wonderful, dear. No, we don't need no detective running around at their grocery store. He's stealing from you, isn't he? That's fine. I'll catch him. Well, should he be watched? Listen, honey, let the man stay in New York. I know what I'm talking about. Never mind. About. I've sent for him, and he'll be here today. So you should keep a lookout for him. And for heaven's sake, keep your mouth shut. Can I see that? Oh, I'm running just, I, I'm running too. My name is Sam Peck. You probably have to sell my building. Say, say Sam. Come on. Sam, how about we go down here to the corner where there are a lot of men down there. Uh, you go on, honey. You get them all riled up. I'll be there in just a second. As I was saying. Is that so? I think you'll be going this minute, Sam. Sam! Uh, yeah. Yes. Eyes coming.
Steve Jenkins takes his chair as the next mayor of Jimtown. My candidate. <laughs> oh, and I heard your mother objected to you marrying Harry in as much as he lost the election. And I am truly sorry for that indeed. Well, that will never make any difference with Harry and me. I hope not. Never in the least. That's fine. Straight like that. Ain't you got no sense at all? Whew. I was training for the chief of police. Uh, who? The chief of police. Where? Here, in Jimtown. Um, who's gonna approach you? You is? Is I? Now wait a minute. Don't you remember back there in that grocery store, right before the election, you said. If you was ever appointed mayor, you was gonna make me chief of police. Do you remember that? Oh, okay, I said that before I was elected. Oh, there you is. <laughs> well, if you ain't got no better sense than to pay attention to them election promises, you ain't got sense enough to be no chief of police. I'll tell you that now. So that be the case? That am the case. You ain't gonna be nothing in Jim's time. Is I fit? You bet your life you fit. Can I whip anybody here? You can whip anybody in the bunch. No one is receptive. You can lick anyone over there. Let's go. Give him them gloves. Give him them gloves. <laughs> oh. You gonna fight me for the job. Is that it? Well. The job is worth me having, it's worth me fighting for. Well, if you whips me, then I'm gonna make you chief of police. Oh, you ain't got to worry about that. If I whips you, I was gonna be the chief of police. <laughs> well, you better send word home that you ain't gonna be there for dinner, cause I'm gonna arrange for you to go right past your door. Well, you know that I'm the man that was born with these boxing gloves on. Yeah, the boy, the <coughs> boy. And the show looks like you gonna die the same way. Mm -hmm. what? Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Let's go.
Dean Jenkins is the type of a man that you advocate for the mayor of Jimtown? Now, Mrs. Williams. Well, I'm surprised a man with your standing. Mrs. Williams. Oh, dry up, young man, dry rider. Don't you try to tell me my business. I'm one of the oldest citizens of Jimtown, a taxpayer, and have a perfect right to know why the city money is being so foolishly spent. Who in the world ever heard of a city paying for the mayor's valet? What right have we to pay for these five stenographers? And look at this office. Look at this office. Does it look like a mayor's office? I shall say not. It looks like some old woman's home. But you must admit, Mrs. Williams, the mayor has some very beautiful stenographers. Beautiful and minus ability. Why, every one of them would have to have their fingers cut off before they could write shorthand. See here, he hasn't been elected mayor three days when he's bought an automobile, engaged six chauffeurs, and we, we the city, have got to pay for it. I don't blame you, Mrs. Williams, for thinking that way. The whole election was a fraud. At the right time and right place, I will expose to the whole of Jimtown that Harry Walton is the rightful mayor. You will prove it? And who are you? Oh, I see. My position here is a very peculiar one. Tom Sharper hired me to watch Sam Peck. Mrs. Peck hired me to watch Steve Jenkins. And when I got here, I found them robbing each other. But worst of all, my best friend, Harry Walton, being cheated. Cheated? Yes, cheated. As I said before, at the right time and right place, I will expose all. At the moment, we better not be seen together. So I'd advise you leave this office at once and leave everything in my hands. I guess you're right, Mr. Penrose, for I don't care to come in contact with Steve Jenkins to begin with. Steve Jenkins, the mayor of Jimtown. Some joke. Secretary. Good morning, sir. Is the mayor in? No, sir. Not yet. May I take your name? No, thank you. I'll call later. Very well, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Attention! His honor. The mayor of Gentile. At ease. Hmm. Your Honor, hmm. some gentleman from New York here to see you. Some gentleman from where? New York. And where's that? I don't know. That's not on my beat, sir. Tom, come on in here. Right this way, gentlemen. His Honor, the mayor. <clears throat> At ease. How are you, Your Honor? We'd like to see you about a concert in the town hall. Oh, well, since I've been elected mayor of Jim Town, I have appointed myself the census bureau. Therefore, I'm asked to know the nature of this entertainment. It is a singing concert. Your Honor, I used to sing with these gentlemen. Come on. We would be pleased to sing for your pleasure. Well, I might even join you. I used to do a little crew, mm -mm, crew, mm -mm, crew, crooning myself. <laughs> Hear that old town clock a striking, Angeline. Suppose it's time that we were hiking, Angeline. I sure. Child, when you ain't near me, I feel 
limits the right time for turtle dubbing. Kiss this age much finer, hugging seems diviner, but I must leave you, honey, cause I am feeling fine. Good night, Angeline. Hear that old church choir singing,
Maria Chim. He out already? He ain't been locked up yet. I thought it was the first person you put away when you got the job. Oh, Tom, I wasn't thinking about locking him up. Ain't we got some fine protection? Say, what's that you got in your hand there? That? That's a lamp. Next to Aladdin's lamp? That's the oldest thing I ever saw. Aladdin's lamp? What you talking Aladdin's lamp? You never heard of Aladdin's lamp? No, Tom, I never heard. Tell of it. Well, that was the old lamp they found. When they rubbed it, a chain would come up. And any question they would ask him, he would answer. And any wish they would make, he would grant it. You see, if that was Aladdin's lamp, and you rubbed it and a genie came up, and you asked him where Slippery Jim was, he'd tell you exactly where to find him. No, Tom, I don't want that. Oh, but it was a marvel. Steve robbing Sam, Sam robbing Steve, and the store clerk robbing both of them. And then I, in turn, robbed all three of them. Oh, this is dreadful. Here is the money. Give it to your husband and Steve. And tell them to be in that store tomorrow morning, ready to run business on the level. Oh, that's impossible. They have to be at the mayor's office tomorrow morning. No, not tomorrow morning. Harry Walton shall be in the mayor's office tomorrow morning. Well, I don't understand this at all, Mr. Penrose. Well, well, come with me, madam, and I will explain.
and citizens of Jimtown. We always knew that Harry Walton is the right man for the mayor. All Let's right. welcome him tonight, each and every one of us, for he's all right. He's all right. Who's all right? Harry Walton's all right. You're right. in the right place. And tonight, I also introduce him as my future son-in-law. Oh, 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 oh. 